Greetings and good health to you. Welcome to another issue of Silo Make Kanyube. Opening up with Silo Make Kanyube. Yes, and as usual, we're going to start with the nuggets of wisdom. And the nuggets of wisdom that we're going to start with today are from a lady called Shirley Sandberg. And she says, we need all, we need women at all levels, including the top, to charge the to change the dynamic, to reshape the conversation, to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored. And today I am with this lady who is going to help me unpack all that. Yo! <laughs> she is fucking an actor and an anchor and a child star. So that's, so, where, so that's, so that, that's where it's all starting. That's where it all so started. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, please, <laughs> welcome here, Solo Mashish. Thank you so much. It I'm is so such a privilege to be here. No, I am you. so, so happy to see you also again. Sure. Okay? We haven't seen each other for ages. Like I said, it's like we live in different worlds. I know, I know. Like in the same area. You know. <laughs> but I am glad we're having this time together. Thank you. <laughs> Molly, tell me, mm. where did you grow up? Home. Where were you born? Were you, you know. Mm. Home, Kikosovit. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Right. 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 Um, at the time, nearly nearly Zulu section, nearly Sotho section, nearly Yes, yes, yes. So uh, we started to go Sotho section. All right, okay. And we moved on up to distance. Wow, well, right? okay, okay. And um, yeah, that's where I. I, I, I grew up and mm. I, oh, that's what shaped me. Right, right. Um, I lived with my mom and my dad and mm -hmm. my sister and my late brother. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, this is in the 70s. Right, in, right. In, in, in the township. Right, right. And the fact that I had a mom and a dad mm. under the same roof. Yeah. And I had a big brother and a big sister all under the same roof. Right. I was very aware of that very early on mm -hmm. that I was lucky. Yeah. Because a lot of kids my age in mm -hmm. my neighborhood, my neighbors were not so lucky. They were either right. staying with grandmothers, yeah. um, just mom, moms, yes. sometimes not even parents at all. At all, yeah. So yes, yes. It, was, it, 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 it wasn't lost on me even at a very young age just how lucky I was. Mm -hmm. But it didn't last very long. <laughs> you know, there are things in our childhood that somehow when we look at them, yeah. we say, I could see from that one why I'd be like this. Right. Any right. remarkable moment right. in your childhood right. when you were growing I mean, I have, like when I was doing my... Was it standard three? Mm. Standard three yeah, can we keep it with the standard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the one I understand. Or are you? <laughs> that's the one I understand. Well, I thought... It's <laughs> a great story. Uh -uh. You know, and right. I was in standard three, mm. and, uh, you know, and I was made to perform a recitation. Right. So I think now, those for me, I mean, that incident in my life was like, I think that's, this wow. was just saying, all right, he's going to be an actor, wow. this one. You know what I mean? But anything about your childhood that when you look back, it actually right. is the core of who you are <laughs> today. Sure, there's a lot, eh? No? Um, I wouldn't pinpoint it to one specific yeah. mm -hmm. incident, but I'll tell you of two, um, I think, that are quite important. Yeah. I remember very early on, we used to be encouraged at home to read newspapers. Okay. Okay. All then right. we thought our parents were being mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are we yeah. reading newspapers, <laughs> the mm -hmm. encyclopedia? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Why? Mm. So it is a way of trying to get into something that I really didn't want to do. Yeah. I started reading it out loud. Uh -huh. And my reading it out loud and the fact that oh, another thing, we were forced to watch news. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We yeah. were forced to watch news. Mm -hmm. I started imitating newsreaders okay so every time i'd read my britannica or my newspaper mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay so this is how they would say it mm. don't put a full stop just go away yeah you know, already i was kind of shaping myself up right you know, right right to, 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 for the life in the spotlight okay so okay yeah 
But over and above that, the other incident, I think, is mm-hmm. when my family uh, broke apart. Okay. You know, my so parents got divorced mm-hmm. and my brother was killed. Mm-hmm. Now, so in a very short period of time, mm-hmm. I lost two very influential males mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. And the only ones that I grew up with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In a very short period of time, they were just not there anymore. Yeah. And they used to look after me. My brother mm-hmm. used to... I mean, I remember my brother taught me how to drive when I was 12. Wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know you I know, things. I know, I know. How old was he when he... <laughs> uh, he, was, he was in his late 20s then. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, okay. Mm-hmm. And I think that moment, mm-hmm. I knew I had to pull myself up wow. and make something of myself. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't have anybody looking after me anymore. Right, yeah. So I knew that I was going to go to school, mm-hmm. make something of myself, right. and be successful. Yeah. That was that was time. done. Yeah. Everything else on the side mm-hmm. had to be pushed away. Wow. So I think those were two things that I can I think kind of mm-hmm. merged there mm-hmm. 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 and ended up with Tolo. Tolo, exactly. Who you see today. You know, <laughs> Tolo Matsike. <laughs> Tolo Matsike. Matsike. That's, you know, that that's where we started. Exactly. <laughs> that's where we started. You know, I mean, uh, KTV. Mm. Mm. By that time, you're living with your mom. So you? at the time, mm-hmm. my parents had just divorced. Okay. And it's a bit hard at home mm-hmm. because now it's single income. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And my sister has to go to school. I have to go to school. And this thing just literally dropped on my lap. Mm. At the time, I wasn't really looking into going into going television the, yeah. or anything mm-hmm. like that. I think I was about 13, 14. Yeah. I was yeah. still quite young. Mm. And uh, my English teacher at school mm-hmm. just said to me, I have a friend who is doing a casting. Mm. And I think, you know, your English is so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're such a good student. Yeah. I think you should go do this. Yeah. And Palama takes you get to this place. I have no idea what an audition is. I know. I go in there, they give me something to read, I read it, mm-hmm. and then I went home. Yeah. And that's where it ended for me. Yeah. Next thing, my mother gets a call. Yes. <laughs> Next thing, I'm going to a studio. Mm-hmm. Next thing, they're giving me more things to read. Right. Next thing, I'm getting money. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is a good gig. I still have no idea what's going on. Yeah, here. yeah. We don't have a decoder at home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We don't... Uh, that, that whole uh, television life, I'm not into it. I'm not aware of it. You're of this world. I was such an innocent child at the time. Mm, okay. So all I knew is that on a Saturday, I mm. go there, mm. I read and I just be myself in right. front of the camera exactly, yeah. and then Mula comes in yeah. <laughs> you know, so that, that's not a bad gig yeah. and then obviously you, 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 you start to realize now what everybody mm-hmm. starts recognizing you and you're thinking yeah. people What's know who I am what's mm-hmm. going on yeah, yeah. and then so it was a very slow process for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember one time we were at a shop on a Saturday with my mom and we were, we were at a, you know, when they're selling TVs, they've got them all. All right, yes, And they've yes, got channels yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. And then I saw myself for the first time. I was like, is that what people are seeing? <laughs> <laughs> From then, my mom was like, okay, you know what, enough. I'm going to get you a decoder. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that oh, yeah, you can because see. KGB was it on. It was on oh, oh, no, oh, MNET, yes. Yeah, mm. but, well, close time. It wasn't open time. Time, though. yes, yes. And that's how it all evolved. And I grew. From wow. I just grew from wow. there. Yeah. And then now when the fame hits, you know, over that time, how did that, in, you know, it impact was, your life? It was a bit difficult because I was still school-going age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, school kids can be... Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes cruel, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So they start... With, 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 there's a little bit of jealousy as well. Of course, of course. <laughs> you, know? you know, because uh, everybody's like, we would love to do what you do, but... Mm-hmm. I could do that better. Yeah, yeah. I saw you the other day and you were mm-hmm. doing this. And but I, I, I developed a thick skin a long time ago. Yeah. And no. I think that has held me in good stead for yes. a very long time. Mm-hmm. Up, up, up till now. Yeah. Um yeah. I, I developed a very thick skin and I decided, you know, what was important for me now then yeah. was that I was actually able to help out at home. Yeah. So that for me was the prize more than the fame. Yeah, was absolutely. That I was able to say to mom, um, mm-hmm. okay, I'll buy this or I'll buy that. And mm-hmm. I'm a teenager at that time. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, from about the age of 14, mm-hmm. I became financially independent from my parents. Wow. And mm-hmm. yeah, the rest is history. I've yeah. never 
I never received money from my mom from the time I was so, fourteen. I put myself yeah. through school. Mm-hmm. I put myself through varsity, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, she I, she's never had to pay. And uh, education wise, how? Uh, education wise, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> what did you study? What you know, you, you know when you finish matric, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, I always said to my mom, obviously the fame is coming in. I'm getting comfortable, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking I want to be an actor now. I want to be an wow. actress. I want to mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. And my mom is like. The only deal is that you finish matric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then maybe you can think about it. And then mm-hmm. I finish matric, and you're like, you go to university first, <laughs> and then you can <laughs> so some the of bo- these keeps on shifting. So some of these things you did because of mom. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was going to be the doctor in the family, but okay. come matric, I was like, no, uh-uh, no, that's not my deal. And mm-hmm. you know, I must give credit to my mother right that she didn't force me into what she wanted to do yeah because i saw that a lot happening with a lot of relatives mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and it messes mm-hmm. people up, yeah you yeah know? it does it does i had a mother who had the foresight to say okay you know what you choose what you want to do and i studied mm-hmm. communication and industrial psychology at right the time. okay um, through UNISA mm-hmm. and while I was working, so okay. I was working and studying and okay, working. And studying. Right, okay. So I never really got the campus feel really because I would just go to lectures, just go on set, that, yeah. go to lectures, okay, go on set. Yes, so yeah. the work ethic, I think, started from there, there as well. Yeah, yeah. I started from there, mm-hmm. and I did my degree and I gave it to my mom. Can I now go do <laughs> what I wanted to? <laughs> you know, I really suffer the same thing. Yeah. I suffer the same thing. Really? Yeah, because I think I was doing what. And at nine that right, time, right. and uh, Gibson Kenter came to Atridgeville, right. and they were, after the show they were saying, eh, those who want to audition, you know, yeah. tomorrow, it was Saturday, come and audition, and I went, oh, mama, mama, oh, can I please go, oh, go, to, go to audition, <laughs> <laughs> and they said, no, 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 oh, metric oh, first. Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, and you didn't argue with your parents then. No, no, not at all. When not they all. say this is what's going to happen, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yes, yes. So, and that's why I'm so grateful to her that she didn't right. force me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I would have been forced to do what she wanted to do. Yeah. I would have been miserable. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of parents miss that. Mm. You know, um, they, 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 we, we like to live our dreams through, through our, our children, kids, not mm. knowing that they are their own entities. Do you they know, have their do, own dreams. You know, do, do, do you have the, do you know the, um, Khalil Gibran, the prophet? No, 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 no. Oh, there's a lovely thing where he, when he talks about children. Right. You know, and, and basically, you know, right, he's saying what you're saying now. And what he says, he says, children, your children are not your children. Mm. They're the sons and daughters of life longing for itself. Wow. You know, they come through you. Right. But not from you. Oh. You know, and they go. You know, and they live in the house of dreams, which you cannot even dwell in it. You know what I mean? But it's exactly what you're saying. That is very profound. That is very profound. And I think because you have to look after them and right, yeah, nurture them and make sure that they got morals, they got, you know, Mm -hmm. they know what's right and wrong. Exactly. Yeah. They become an extension of you, Mm -hmm. and I think Mm -hmm. it's and it's a very difficult thing to move away from exactly, yeah. as a parent yeah, it's a very yeah. difficult thing but mm-hmm. I think once you become aware mm-hmm. of that what yes, you just said right yes, now yeah. you learn mm-hmm. you learn yeah. to kind of let them be right yeah I've got teenagers mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh it's happy times in my household yeah. <laughs> no. I've got teenagers yeah. and they are very different mm-hmm. one is very arty one is very Not, yeah. mm-hmm. and I've had to learn mm-hmm. to say you do what you feel you're comfortable with you do what you feel absolutely comfortable with. yeah and let them be able to make their own decisions, decisions exactly but worst of all mm-hmm. let them be able to make their mistakes which I think is very difficult I know we can't is stand it? to watch our kids make mistakes I know, it, I know. It's, we feel like it's a reflection on us mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. so it's 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 a it's a process. Yeah, it's a yeah. Process, but it starts with consciousness. No, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And then, what drive? I mean, what was your inspiration to get into acting? I think I, from KTV, it was just a natural progression. Okay. I it awakened something in me. Yeah, yeah. That I didn't even know I had. Had yes, exactly. Know? Yeah. And that's why exposing yourself to different things mm-hmm. is very important because it can awaken things that you didn't even know you Absolutely, liked. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. So I think the KTV years mm-hmm. gave me that opportunity, and right. I thought, okay, there is more to this mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I can do. So mm-hmm. now suddenly I was. 
getting older and KTV was getting a little too juvenile for That's me. That's it, yeah, yeah. And then you start thinking, oh, what would I want to do? I'm do like, yeah. I want to be an actress. Mm-hmm, I want to mm-hmm, do this. And mm-hmm. I'm going to get an agent. And, you exactly, know, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it was just a natural progression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm a very restless soul. Yeah. What, <laughs> I'm if very I may restless. ask, I don't know, I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. You know, is, what is your star sign? <laughs> <laughs> I was avoiding bringing that up because, okay, okay. <laughs> because you're gonna say aha. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. So I'm a Gemini. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Okay. So you mm. never get the same person consistently. Consistently, exactly. <laughs> I will love this, this and I will love that. Exactly. And I will, um, yeah, and I will do them yes, all. Yeah. I will do them all. Don't mm. worry about me. I will be fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. So because I'm a restless soul, and I, I, I so KTV ended up being not so much yeah, yeah. I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Went into acting. Oh, it was I, the other twin going... <laughs> the other twin was like, can I have my turn? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then I went into acting when mm-hmm. I was going through varsity. Right. And then after that, I the restlessness came in mm-hmm. and I found acting to be a bit limited for me at mm-hmm. the time. So I've got this degree. Mm-hmm. I've got this work experience. Right. There must be something more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's when I went into journalism. Wow. Yeah. That's how I ended up there. Because I always mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I always want to better. Yes. Go something up. That's it, yes. Always go something up. And I I I always had that from the days when I was reading the newspaper. Paper, yes. <laughs> it's always been at the back of my head. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't mind going into this field. So when I got my degree, I thought, okay, maybe mm-hmm. that's one thing I can get into. And it so happened that it coincided with ETV being started. Right. Yes, that's how old I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> well, I mustn't say a word. I mustn't say a word. So mm-hmm. when ETV started and they were based in... Um, Cape Town, at the right, yes. started out, mm. they sent out briefs that they wanted journalists, they wanted anchors, they wanted this and that and the other. Mm. And I saw this um, ad and I was like, this is where I want to be. Yes, yeah. I applied and immediately they took me. And it meant relocating to Cape Town. This was mm. like, this is my early 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was ready mm-hmm. to just try something completely different and something completely new. Wow. And I actually stayed in that industry longer than I thought I would. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, because mm-hmm. um, it, I did ETV for about a year. Right, there, yeah. And I came homesick. Mm-hmm. I came back, I joined the SAPC. So busy, yeah. And so as a result, I always tell people that I've actually been to every newsroom. I worked in every newsroom. I worked in right, ETV, I worked in SAPC, I worked mm-hmm. in Prime Media. I've, um, and then obviously Mnet, that's where I, yeah. I started. So I've yeah. actually worked everywhere. <laughs> went almost everywhere and I, mm-hmm. I, I love that it was yeah. what I needed it. yeah yeah it's what I, I needed and I thrived at it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I thrived at it yeah the acting bug as it, oh, when it bit first role that you got what is it <gasps> Soul City Lizega. Right. I think it was Soul City season two. Season two, right. Because right. I remember a friend of mine, Norman Day, yeah. was in season one. Mm-hmm. And she was mm-hmm. like, hey, they're auditioning for season two. Yeah, okay. I went to that. Okay. And I auditioned and got it. Yeah, yeah. And that was my very first role after KTV. KTV, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I was called Soul City mm. season two. You know, I, I, I want to say, <laughs> I, I, when I used to go to audition, yeah. I used to have an attitude. Why? Why is that an attitude? Why? Because and I mean, we'll, I mean, you know, like we would stand in a you know, right, sitting, right. seated in the line and you know, literally you a kettle call. Yeah, kettle call. <laughs> right. And I'll be sitting there and I look at everybody there and I'll say, one of but a billion now because <laughs> you have to have that attitude. No, but you do. <laughs> but you, do. you can't go in there like no, this. No, like, no, Oh my goodness, they're going to be better than me. You can't. So you you, can't. what did you have? <laughs> what did you have? I just wanted it over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted it over and done with. Right. I always used to go with my friend Normand. Yeah, yeah. So we'd always like sit together and kind mm-hmm. of chit chat so that we don't sit there and kind of look around right and right be intimidated exactly be intimidated. Oh, oh yes oh yes so we'll always take each other to auditions mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. so that we can just 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it can be lonely on that kettle call. It, it can be very, and it, it can take forever, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think that's how I got around it. Right, but right. I understand the apprehension, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very intimidating, and yeah. if you don't have a thick skin, like I yeah. said, I developed, mm-hmm. you will start thinking that you're not getting roles because you're not good enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people who are starting out mm-hmm, need mm-hmm. to know that from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. That because you don't get a role, it's because you did not fit. The role that they want, exactly, not that exactly. you're not good, mm-mm, mm-mm, you know, because I think it can, it can. Oh, it can. Oh, 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 oh bring a lot of people oh. down, and then they give up. It's like I, I'm not doing this anymore. Because how many rejections have you got hey, in your lifetime? You know, if I even will tell exactly. you, Whoa. exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. you're still standing, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got to, you've got to know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Lisa Eka. Mm. You're playing that part. How, mm. What is it that, mm. for instance, appealed to you? To be quite honest, Lisa Ka wasn't that far from Tsurufelo. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So it wasn't a, it wasn't such a stretch. Right. Sure, she stayed in Mukuku. She was quite poor and whatever. But mm-hmm. she was a smart girl. Right. Yes, yeah. I was smart. <laughs> <laughs> she was a smart girl. Right. Um, you know, with it. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't that far of a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed playing that role also because it it was a way of me to prove myself. So, right, right. That I can actually do this. Mm-hmm. And I actually got a do they what do they call them at the time? Um, artists. Remember the artists. The way the artist, the artist award. Artist award. Yes. I actually got a nomination for Lisa Gaz's wow. role. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was mm-hmm. it was huge. Which, yeah. at the time. Mm-hmm. Like generation, like Archie Morocco was. <laughs> you know it. You know it. You know. You know. You know. So Lisa, you would say that was the role that sort yeah. of like almost opened doors. And it said to me, I mm-hmm. can do it. Yes. That's the one role that said to me, I, 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 you've proven yourself. You can actually do this. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Mm-hmm. You are mm-hmm. an entity. You mm-hmm. can do what is needed to be done. Right. Right. And roles kept on coming. Mm-hmm. One after another after that until I put a stop to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you put a stop to it and people like was like, what's so yeah. okay? No, 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 they did I don't know how to kill you. You don't know how many times they've said that to me. <laughs> you do not know. Yes. But that's you know, that's mm-hmm. the image yeah. that is given to yes. women. Mm-hmm. It's not that you are trying to uh, say that with your life. Exactly, but yeah. It's what is given to you. To you, yes. Hore, no, she is not around and being the woman of the new millennium. Yeah. Because Bamo Tsuruko Exactly, yes. And people don't realize that sometimes yeah. women make their own choices. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. To decide that okay, I am going to quit work because I want Mm -hmm. to keep my babies first. Yeah. And I was lucky, Mm oh, so lucky. I was blessed Mm -hmm. to be in an environment where that was possible. Possible, exactly. You understand? Without Mm -hmm. having to now have to count cents and wonder what I'm going to do. I have to work. Right. And I have a husband who was very understanding, who said, it's your decision. Uh-huh. If you want to go work, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. And I made, and the fact that I was given that choice sure, absolutely made it easier mm-hmm. for me to mm-hmm. say no. I actually I would like to yeah um keep put my kids first because I really mm-hmm. felt like I was neglecting them because I worked and while they were quite young. Is it young? And I just felt like I was a failure at my work mm-hmm. and I was a failure with my kids. kids so I was not winning anyway. Well, yeah. So I had to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And, and the decision, decision was focus. Was, yeah. I'm going to focus on my kids. They're right. only kids for such a short period I of know. time. And I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And looking back now right. at that decision, it was a hard decision. I, I can imagine. Lie. No, I can imagine. It was a very, very I can hard imagine. decision. I can imagine. But I'll do it again. Yeah. Knowing what I know now. <clears throat> you know, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> I always say that I think, what is it, applause. Mm-hmm and recognition mm. can be a drug. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did that affect you? You know what? Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say it affected me a lot, uh, but yeah. I'd be lying if I say 
there wasn't an element of it at some, some point. Some point, yeah. Because yes. mm-hmm. it is a drug. You're absolutely it is, right. It yeah. is, yeah. So now you went from there to... So now who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who's that? Exactly. And plus my surname has changed. Yeah, like, yeah. Who mm-hmm. are you talking about? Mm-hmm. So, but I, I, I like the fact that I was, I was raised by a woman who grounded me. Yeah. To not let things like that get to you or define you. You, yeah. Sure, they they itch. Oh yeah. They they can bother, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they don't define you. Yeah. And it, it made it easier for me mm-hmm. to let go of that and then just concentrate on my kids. And also, I knew I was a smart woman. Yeah. And my not being famous anymore doesn't take that away from mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. I still have a lot to offer. Yeah. You know, it might not be in the public space, but mm-hmm. I still have a lot to offer. Yeah. But those things are easier are easier said than done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to keep telling yourself that or and affirm mm-hmm. yourself. That's it. That's it. That you are more than just your job. Mm-hmm. You are more than just some so and so's wife. You mm-hmm, are more than mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. so and so's mother. Mm-hmm. You are an entity. Mm. You are an entity. And, and absolutely. You know? you know the thing? Oh, gosh, you're exciting. You you're exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are, basically, you're making these choices. Mm. What did the, what did your mother's influence? Did your mother's, you know, like, you, you know, like, I mean, I, when I lost my father, mm. I remember, especially my stepfather, was, he was always present with me. Wow. That's a gift. You know what I mean? That's a gift. Because when I wanted to do something mm-hmm. and I wanted advice mm-hmm. and I would think, well, what would my stepfather say? Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. And I, one thing beautiful about him was very encouraging. Wow. And I think once I had found my niche, right. he was like, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Wow. You are very lucky. You know? You're very lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just as, you know, thinking that with you, mm-hmm. What, you know, what role did your mother, mm. you know, play? You know, I mean, the, the, the conversations that you know, whether she's there or not yeah. there, those... And you know, the other thing is what? We tend to think you know, that our conversations are new. And they're not. They're not. It's a actually, repetition. Actually, <laughs> actually, when you start realizing that now you know you're matured. Yeah. <laughs> are you oh, saying that you are holding? <laughs> okay. No, that is so true. Mm-hmm. You know, my mother was a very big figure in my life. Yes, yes. Because growing up, it was just me, her, mm-hmm. and my sister. That's right, it. right. I didn't have influence about uncle, little boy, auntie, and and all that, it yeah. was just us. Yeah. And it was, it was lonely, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but also it gave us an opportunity to she, it, it, to be close to her. Right, you know, right, in yeah. In a way that I don't think would have happened if we had other outlets, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. we never had. Yeah. So my mom has been passed now for, 10 years. Right, no. Still feels like yesterday. Yeah, no, it never, years. yeah. Mm-hmm. But can I tell you, Silo, when I make a decision about something, mm-hmm. I can hear her in my head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Saying, Sulu, hey, hey, or, hey. Mm-hmm. Sulu, that's not how you're supposed to do things. Right. Mm-hmm. And in a very gentle voice. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And so she's still a very huge figure in my life. Right, right. Even after her passing. Mm-hmm. Um, Every time I do something, I always revert to hmm, mm-hmm. Mama Nalimu, mm-hmm. Nagori, yeah. you know, but always encouraging, mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. encouraging mm-hmm. also. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was saying that the fact that from metric when I decided, no, I'm not going to do what was expected of yeah. me, yeah. 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 the fact that she said to me, Tulu, it's okay, mm-hmm. that I, I earned a much bigger respect for right, her. Right, right. Because it couldn't have been easy for her because mm-hmm. it was that generation. Exactly, you know, and yeah. And also, and generation. raising a girl child is not Absolutely. an easy, it's not an easy thing. Oh, no, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> how, I know how many, now. Boy guess, oh, boy, oh, how many boys, boy, how many girls? <laughs> I've got three girls and one boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Talk to me about <laughs> it. <laughs> three girls and one boy. Mm-hmm. So they say when you have your first child, yeah, yeah, you gain a whole new respect for your mother because <laughs> now you understand. For <laughs> all right, this yeah, is what yeah. she wants. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now it falls on you now. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So when I used to see her being gentle with my kids, I'm like, mm-hmm. but this is not. 
the woman who raised me was so gentle. Yeah. She was like, I was meant to be your parent then. Mm-hmm. Now you're the parent. parent I'm the grandparent. <laughs> so let me be the grandparent. But, yeah. You be the hard one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you be the hard one. So yeah, mm-hmm. huge influence. Huge, huge influence. No, great. Yeah. You, 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 you haven't done theatre, is it? Not you know, that was one of my biggest regrets. Is that it? That I have never done theatre so far. And mm-hmm. I, I, I wanted, I've always wanted to do it. Yeah, because, yeah. Because, you know, you used to do that at school. Yeah, you know, yes. School exactly. plays, school, school plays, plays exactly. theatre. Yes, yes. I used to do that at school, but mm-hmm. after that, I never really got an opportunity. Just the right, yeah. So, that probably one of my biggest regrets. No, yeah. yes. no, don't regret it. You know, I still have time. You still have okay. time. All right, all right. So, you know, and, uh, bucket list. I, I tell you, I tell you. No, <laughs> you, you, still, no you still have time. You know. How different is theatre from TV? Maybe I can ask you because you've done both. Yes. You know, there's, there, there, there's this notion mm. that uh, theatre, in fact, there's theatre acting mm-hmm. and camera acting. Right, right. You know, right. And I, I tend to think, and, or I, my observation taught me, mm. that there are only two types of acting. Mm-hmm. Good acting and bad acting. <laughs> And now what people tend to Bless do... Bless your heart. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now what people tend to do mm. is that when they're doing bad acting, they say it's theatre acting. Uh, okay. And it is not. And I think I know what you're talking about. Yes. I think I know what you, you're you, talking you, you, about. You know what I mean. So yeah. there's camera acting and there is theatre acting. Mm. and But both these um, mediums mm. have got uh, what you call... Uh, they deal with space. Right. You know, right, right. You know, right. with camera you're dealing with space right. and the mic is here or and there. And theater it's... And the theater you're dealing mm. with the space, you know. Mm. So at the end of the day, you all have, you all you've got to do is understand space, right. you know. Right. And then when you're talking in the theater, you're talking so that to the benefit of people who are listening. So basically it is your voice. I mean, look at people at um, funerals, mm. for instance, or at gatherings. Ordinary people, when they speak, they become aware of the space. True. True. That's all you've got to do. True. And uh, especially at funerals, that a person will be speaking, you know, to the hall, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and they will affect you equally right. as an actor would. Right, right, right. You, you know that's, what I mean? That's actually so, a very good way of explaining it. Mm-hmm, I never mm-hmm. thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah. you know. So, I, you know, for me, it's like, uh, you know, no, it can be done. You no, still have an I, opportunity. I, I still have time. I still you know, have time. Uh, I'll keep you at the back of my mind. <laughs> Please do. I'll keep you at the back I'm of my mind. I'm such a No, uh, you're raising children. Mm. The principles that have guided you, which you are imparting, the DNA of to principles them. to mm. them. Mm. Specific ones. Um... You know, every time I parent my kids, like I said, mm-hmm. my mother's always. Yeah. So when I see them doing something, it's like, oh, my mother must be turning in her grave. Great, yeah. Because this is what I should have taught them. This is what I should teach them. This is what they should be doing. This is what mm-hmm. they should be doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I have that one aspect. Right? right, yeah. And then I also have that aspect where I'm also trying to get them to be as independent as mm-hmm. possible. Because mm-hmm. the way my mother raised us Mm -hmm. was to look after ourselves right be self-sufficient yeah and that for me is the biggest thing about Mm -hmm. raising kids right now Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. that they need to be self-sufficient right they mustn't always think i'm going to be around forever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. must be able to gather themselves up they must be able to solve problems they must be able to do on their own Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it has been one of the biggest challenges But I think for me, the most important lesson that I can impart to my kids Mm -hmm. is to be self-sufficient. Yeah. I grew up incredibly self-sufficient. Right. Almost to a fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I was just, I'm doing things myself. I'm my own person. (laughs) And my mother, hey, Mm -hmm. (laughs) don't just calm down. Down, Mm -hmm. But there is something to be said, especially with girl children, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about being self-sufficient. Right, yeah. Being able to, for instance, have a vocation. Mm-hmm. Have dreams, mm-hmm. have passions, mm-hmm. and don't apologize for 
doing something that makes you happy. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm. Fall in love, no problem. Get married, no problem. Yeah. But don't lose yourself. Be self sufficient. Yeah, yeah. Do not lose yourself. And and I, I see that a lot. And mm-hmm. It makes me very sad. Right. Yeah. I I I would have fallen into that trap after I got married. But mm-hmm. I, like I said to you, I I have an incredible partner, yeah. husband, mm-hmm. who wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. It's like, no. Do you, as the kids say, mm-hmm. do you? And yeah. don't apologize for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And you know what? Marriages can thrive with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. But you know, I mean, Edmund, we struggle. I mean, and the thing is that we struggle with this whole thing. I think of independence yeah. and dependency. Right. 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 How do we? How do we find a balance? Find, find a balance. Find a balance. Suppose. Yeah. You know, compromise, mm-hmm. especially within a marriage. Right. Yeah is very underrated mm. but marriage is a negotiation yeah really mm-hmm. from beginning to end to end exactly yes love is important mm-hmm. and all of that mm-hmm. stuff yes mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. i'm not mm-hmm. taking that away mm-hmm. but it's a negotiation yeah because you know i think we don't put enough emphasis right on how a person is socialized mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when you bring two people together into a marriage right yeah just socialize differently exactly yeah. and then this one is going to expect this one to do things the way they were socialized and mm-hmm. this one's going to expect this one to do things right, the way yeah. they was mm-hmm. and then you know finally a clash that's it yeah so i think these are the kind of discussions people should have yeah about what are your expectations what do you what 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 for you is an idea of a family? Yeah. What for you? And then see if you meet each other. Right, yeah. You know, I think sometimes we're, we're in love and we don't think about these things mm. and then we only start thinking about them but when we're know, inside the hole. <clears throat> what what, what I'm appreciating, what I'm appreciating with what you just said mm. is that it's a constant negotiation. Constant. And I think also even the fact that, you know, even marriages, there are contracts. Yeah, they are. They are. You, you, you know they what I mean? Because yeah. they, they, you know, whatever, the, what, anti-neptual right. and right. whatever. You know, right. And they're the contracts. They're contracts. And so, which means, when you, I mean, well, some of us are not as fortunate as you, because, <laughs> because I mean, I said to you, at Shona's, uh, Shona's memorial, right. that, you know, Boshona, I think, at his 10th anniversary, oh. you know, I said to him, I said, hey, you know, dude, uh, I mean, the tenth anniversary of him and Cody. Yeah, that way. And I said, yeah. hey, you guys, you know, you are, you, you are marathon runners. <laughs> You're there spr- for the long haul. Yeah, we're na- not, we're na- na- sprint. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But like you say, it's a constant negotiation, mm. which means amendments yes. come on yes. a regular basis as you are, Absolutely. you know, and, and to impress the whole thing to even younger people to mm. say, hey, it is an institution that you can value. They can still. No. It's the attitude you go into it with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to talk to this person? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to make consents about... Uh, I, will, I will compromise on this. Yeah. Kaosani, I will... The other one will compromise, compromise on, on this. that, yes. You know, just so that you can... You are living with another human being mm-hmm. who you were not raised with. Mm-hmm. Who has a different set of values mm-hmm. and what it is. Mm-hmm. So it's... I mean, I look at where we were when we started our marriage and where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, the negotiations are different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they yes. are so different mm-hmm. because the kids are growing I mean, and then exactly, the other yeah. kids come in and what have you said. It, a lot mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. and you always have to be checking in. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. this still working for me? Right, right. And I think it's quite important. To yeah, do that. Just yeah, to look at. And, and, and you know, one beautiful thing, I mean, my favorite writer, yeah, I, I think the book, The Prophet, is such a. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he has words of wisdom as well with regards to marriage mm-hmm. in, the, in that book. And he says, when he talks about marriage, he says, you were born together and together you shall be forevermore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you shall be together in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know? There's absolutely nothing and, wrong but with you that. But you know, I mean, when he continues, he says, in fact, he says, as a couple, you got to stand like pillars of a temple. They stand together yet apart. Right. And they're holding right. on the structure. Right. You know. So <clears throat> then, this is where you say, you as a woman are an entity. You're my wife, mm-hmm. but you're an entity. Exactly. And then you say, you as my husband, you're my husband, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. but you're an entity. Mm-hmm. 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 I think it's very important that we we don't get lost. And mm-hmm. the danger about being lost in mm-hmm. another person's idea yeah. of you, mm-hmm. 
is that when we realize that we are not living our true selves, mm -hmm. we become resentful. Yes, um, you're raising teenage girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for me. I know. I know. <laughs> but here you are, and you suppose, and you want to talk to your teenage self. Mm. 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 But I want you to talk to your teenage self, but talking to them. Whew. What did you? What would you say about you know to your teenage self? And then, but also giving them what. I give them one phrase mm -hmm. that I wish I'd said to myself when I was a teenager, teenager yeah. or somebody had said it to me when mm -hmm. I was a teenager. It's not the end of the world. It's not, not the, end the end of the, of the world. world. You know, when you're a teenager, mm -hmm. you're still finding yourself. Yeah. You're grown, but mm -hmm. not quite grown. Mm -hmm. You're still trying to figure out where you yeah, fit in yes, life. Yes. Friends are very important. Mm -hmm. and and when something happens that that mm -hmm. makes you just upset, mm -hmm. you think that's it, is, it. That's it. Yes. I will never be able to, to do, do this do again. again. Yeah. And I wish to say to them, mm -hmm. and I wish I had said to myself so, when I yeah. was a teenager, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world. There is still life to be lived. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Also, <laughs> thank you very much. This was, you know, you Thank know, you. you know. I must, I must give you my name for the therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great therapy session. Is it number? Thank you. This Thank was you wonderful. Had, I just, was just a lovely, lovely it was lovely to see one. you again. Lovely seeing you again. You know. <laughs> Uh, no, good. Thank good. you, Ma. Thank you for sharing thank your time you. and all the best, you know, with your comeback. <laughs> with our own. I know, but it's going to work. Now I tell you, you, it's so going to much. work. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Well, there it is. You know, young girls out there or young boys as well, whatever failure, whatever challenge you encounter, it is not the end of the world. Yeah. Well, this is me, Salomakekangobe, saying to do, arrivederci, salangabotse.